What's up, family? If it's your first time checking out the show, let me know. What city, what state you're coming in from? If you're outside of the US, let me know what country you represent. Family, I need you to smash up the likes, smash up the likes, smash up the likes. Now, when you smash those likes up, that does not necessarily mean that you agree with exactly what's being said. It's just that you're showing your appreciation for me taking out the time of my busy schedule to bring you this valuable information. You dig what I'm saying? Also, fam, uh, if you have not done so already, after you subscribe, there's a little bell next to your subscribe button. Go ahead and click that thing right now so you can get your notifications. Each time I drop a new video like this, that way you'll be in the loop. I am going to go in on this uh, subject and uh, when we, we're gonna drop a little spiel and then I'll go into the super chat and then I'll move my way into the regular chat. If you wanna skip the line, jump into the super chat. Uh, very valuable information today. I got a very uh, valuable uh, guest on the show today. Uh, Will Roundtree family. He is uh, what I consider to be my mentor. He's a credit expert, but more importantly, he's a credit educator. You dig what I'm saying? If you've ever had a situation where you've been turned down for credit, made poor financial decisions uh, in the past, or you plan on applying for a mortgage, an auto loan, or a credit, a credit card, you might want to consider listening to this information that is about to be bestowed upon you right now. You dig what I'm saying? Welcome to the show, Will. Peace. How you doing, brother? Hey, man, it's all good. You know, I'm, I'm feeling good. How you getting along out there in Corona world? <laughs> man, I've been staying in the house, took on a, a, a project uh, amidst all of the, as busy as I am with the business, I said, you know what? I want to paint my house. And next thing you know, it turned into a full remodel. So I'm actually in the middle of doing a remodel of my home right now. Right, 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 right. And how's the family getting along? Oh man, everybody's doing good, man. We 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 still we haven't got at each other's necks yet, <laughs> so we all doing good. But right. So I, I, I before you go in on some of the uh, the steps to improve the score and how to go out there and get that money with basically no money, I wanted to give my own testimony. I think absolutely. It, you know because you know. My credit was all jacked up before I called you. <laughs> like I saw you doing your thing on social media. I'm watching right. you, I'm looking. I'm checking out the people that's co-signing you and they're solid, but I'm still apprehensive because I've dealt with a lot of people who talk about credit right. and you know how you gonna get these loans with no money and this or that, you ain't got no assets and, and all of this stuff. You know, how you gonna do this stuff? You know, how can you do this stuff? You know, everybody kind of sound like they got the same pitch and it always sound like it's too good to be true, right? So I Absolutely. said to myself, you know, like I'm one of the type of people that before I recommend anybody, I use myself as a guinea pig. After I do my research, I say, okay, make your magic work. Let me see what you can do. And if right. it works for me, then I'll open it up to the people that I know. And so I get people all the time, credit people, uh, people that are, are financial advisors and, and, and credit repair people uh, and wealth builders all the time coming at me trying to get on my channel. And I know that, you know, I, I respect my subscribers. I respect the people that support me and they mess with me because they trust me. They, you know, and yeah. I don't want to betray that trust by, you know, introducing them to somebody who's going to make their life actually worse than it already is. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And, and when I say worse than it always already is, you know, none of us have perfect lives. So I'm including myself in that equation. Correct. So I just want to tell y'all my little testimony. I called Will. My credit was all jacked up. And I told him, just tell me what to do and I'll do it first and foremost. So 
We started working. He gave me instructions. I followed those instructions to the latter. And what I wanted to do with my credit was I wanted to use my, I wanted to get credit so that I could get loans and not use my own money. You know, I was like, let me fix this thing up so I can get me some loans and use right. other people's money because I didn't use my money in the past. And I've had a whole lot of money said, see you later. I never saw that money again. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I, I, I want to continue to invest, but I don't want to risk my own money. So Will showed me how to do it. First and foremost, he showed me how to repair my credit, get my credit, get my credit right. And, and I'm talking about within six months or so, I was walking inside a building like with my head in the air, like walking like George Jefferson, like y'all can take to me. Well, you know, I might want to do business with y'all. And guess what? I ain't gonna be a nook. You know, I'm coming in here to buy this. I'm coming in here to get this, and I ain't putting down nothing. I ain't giving you nothing. Now, right. check that score. You dig what I'm saying? I was very, very <laughs> reckless with my credit. Very, I never respect the credit because from the time I got money, first of all, I wasn't educated about credit with my parents. They wasn't educated about credit with their parents. So I had no respect for credit whatsoever. So I'm paying all these high interest rates. And you know, I buy, I might buy a $50,000 vehicle and I'm paying another $23,000 in interest because I got a bad score. If my score was good, I probably would have only paid three or $4,000 in interest. So I'm just like, I'm giving away money. Same thing with buying a house. And so, for years, I just lived like that. And I felt like if I needed something, I wanted something bad enough, I just use my own money and I buy it or I use my own money and I invest in it. That is a very, very bad mistake. If you want to be rich, if you want to have wealth, study the people who have already done it. Pay yeah. attention to what they say. If you can get you a mentor, like I got with Will, if you can find you a credit mentor, a wealth building mentor, listen to what they're saying and just do what they tell you to do and boom, it's gonna work. It's not like trying to get into the music industry and you might have talent and you might not, or you gotta get your music played on the radio station. They may play it, they may not. You trying to get do shows and you gotta try to buy your way on shows or you they might book you, they may not. It's not like the music industry. The music is, industry is a, is a chance industry. There's a chance yeah. to make it, there's a chance you won't. With this credit, 100% of the people who make an effort to repair their credit and to, and to strengthen their, their score and to build wealth can actually do it if they pay attention to the people that already know what to do and, and has already done it. So with that, King, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I appreciate the, uh, the accolades. And, uh, you know, definitely one of the things I wanna echo what you said was you were extremely coachable. You know, uh, when you reached out to me, I think we talked for about, you know, about almost two hours, really just getting to know each other uh, I was excited, one, because, you know, I was a fan of your music, your work, and, you know, the legendary status, uh, you know, in the in the music industry. But more importantly, I knew that the main focus was you wanted to make sure that you were, you know, getting your credit in position. So that was really what my focus was. And so for those who may not know me, my name is Will Roundtree, uh, originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, president and founder of We Management Services, two-time author of the book Credit is King which is really just a manual that teaches people everything they need to know about credit from the most novice level all the way up to an intermediate level, everything teaching you about the difference of, you know, really what makes up a credit score, how to deal with collection agents, uh, what happens after identity theft, credit myths. You know, one of the myths that people may not know is that when you marry someone, your credit files do not merge. So these are things that people really don't understand about credit. 
because of course in a black community we were not taught about credit finances we don't even like to talk about money at the dinner table growing up and then of course my second book is full-time ceo the shit they don't tell you which is you know things we just you know uh, a book that i talk about entrepreneurship but the biggest thing about entrepreneurship and business is that the credit component is vitally important you know you always i often say your credit is the lifeline to your business you know whether you're a single member entrepreneur or whether you have a major you know corporation you know it, it it's very difficult to operate your business longevity strictly off of cash because eventually you may run out of cash right and so uh, all around my focus is really just to been able to educate people about credit i never really pegged myself as a credit repair guy my thing has really just been to educate the repair has just been a byproduct of us being able to educate people because okay. the, the the biggest thing is that most people who go through credit repair, 60% of them end up right back in the same situation. That's because they didn't learn the strategies they needed to understand why their credit got in that place. And so that's right. why the credit education component has been vitally important and really been a passion of mine over the past five years. Yeah. Man, and I and I, I can't thank you enough, bro. I mean, like I thought I thought I was good with my finances. I thought money was straight. I thought I was straight. But when I right. got my credit healthy, you know, it, credit health is similar to is like <laughs> the only thing I can the only thing I can really compare it to is like being healthy and fit. You know how when you feel mm. you fit, you, you, you exercise, you're running. You get your heart heart beating, racing. You open those lungs up. You know how strong you feel. That absolutely. You feel that's how you feel when you get that credit score right. I don't care how much money you you have in the bank. You got a component missing if your credit score is not right. You know you was taught. You alluded to the uh, the the, the uh, starting businesses and, and having uh, good credit. You know which are you know connected to your business. That's another thing that you taught me about. You know, I started a business with didn't have to put up none of my own bread. Uh, you know, but yeah. I wouldn't have been able to put that do that business. Well, I, well, I put a little bread up. I mean, we're talking about a few thousand, just a couple thousand dollars or whatever. You know, just uh, for op operating money. But I wouldn't have been able to start that business if I if I would have had bad credit because they don't allow you to come into the business. With bad credit, mm. you miss out on That's so true. many opportunities when your That's credit true. is not good. You know, I told you about the story when I uh, used to be a customer for Ozarka, and I owed them five dollars, and because they <laughs> they pissed me off, I decided I was not going to pay them. It cost right. me, it cost me about thirty points on my credit score. For five dollars, just not paying a five dollar bill. Now, right. now I'm on the phones like, yo, y'all sure I don't owe y'all no money. I know I told the account two years ago, but y'all sure. All right, because right. I don't want nobody messing with my, my credit. I it took me some time to get this thing right to finally get it right. Like you said earlier, I was one of those people because I was uneducated, I just I kept falling back into the same trap. I got my credit repaired. Then I messed it up again. I got it repaired. I messed it up again. I got it repaired. I messed it up again. It wasn't until you educated me about credit that mm -hmm. I, I, I've been steady ever since. I've been steady, yeah. steady ever since once I got educated. See, so if you're not educated, you can have somebody go fix your credit and it'd be right, but it won't take long for you to destroy it again. That is very true. And one of the things that, you know, just hearing you say that, it's like, you call me literally, like, if your score dropped three points, you're like, hey, Will, what, what's going on? So right. it's, just, it's, 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 it's just refreshing to see someone just as excited as I get about credit, you know, like yourself. And, and this is what we need for our community because I always tell people that, you know, one of the reasons we don't really get to be in position, whether it's to start that business, whether we want to buy that first home for our family, is because we don't really understand why credit is important. Now, we hear the stories that, hey, you need credit to buy a house and this, that, and the third. Like a lot of people may not know, employers check your credit score. 
You know, insurance companies dictate your insurance premiums based on your credit score. The uh, PPP, which is the payment, uh, the uh, payment protection plan, which was the government stimulus for small businesses, they ran your credit. Now they they told people they wasn't going to run your credit. They told people it wasn't credit driven. So a lot of these small business owners who were going out trying to get money for their business, trying to cover payroll, they ran their credit. And if they were not in position, they were denied. And so just understanding that credit is so much bigger than just being able to buy a house and get a credit card and buy a house and buy a car, it really is, it dictates our lives. You know, I often say that our credit scores dictate the school zone our kids go to school in. Like really think about that. Or credit is really just a lifeline. You know, I often share that. Uh, you know, imagine how many people are sitting in prison right now because they don't have five hundred dollars for bail. Imagine if your 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 loved one just had a a a thousand dollar credit card just to be able to cover your bail payment. You know, I've had clients that have been able to bail loved ones out because they've had credit, uh, as I call, in case of emergency, break glass type of situation. So credit is so much bigger, but we've just been brainwashed and conditioned by pundits who don't want us to have access to this information to think that credit is bad, it's evil, it's, it's, it's irresponsible. And I say, it's not that credit is bad, it's people who are irresponsible with money that's bad. And that's really just a conditioning thing because we haven't had the opportunity to learn and educate ourselves about how money works. Yeah, <laughs> great point, because I, I was bad. I was one of those people that was very <laughs> bad with credit and spending right. it's just very very bad now how what is the the number one thing in your opinion into getting on the right track or staying on the right track with your credit having healthy credit? i would say the, i would say the very first thing is really changing your mindset you know it's not even the how tools it's changing how you think about credit how you think about money Again, because I'm sure all of us have had parents or big mama or a grandpa who told us credit is bad, you know, don't owe anyone. And it's really just a tool. And mm -hmm. when you understand that it's a tool that gives you the power of understanding how leverage works, that's when you can really open up so many doors. I mean, I've had people call and tell me, Will, improving my credit within my marriage has strengthened my relationship with my spouse. Because now we can sit down and talk about finances. We can talk about our goals. We're not running from the we're not running from the mailman because we're scared that it's a debt collector or we're not screening our phone calls. And so it's really about changing our mindset because we've been so conditioned to think that credit in all realms of credit is bad. You know, I have clients who, you know, who I have family members, excuse me, when you start talking about credit or when I walk in the room, they leave the room. Thinking I'm, you know, thinking I'm going to talk to them or try to scold them, and I'm like, no, that's that's not what it's about. It's about really just understanding. But it all starts with the mindset first. How how important is paying your bills on time? Oh my gosh! So there's a, a, a five components of what makes up your credit score. The largest component is payment history, which is 35 percent of your score. So if you miss one payment your score can drop as much as 50 to 150 points. So that $15 credit card payment you have that you decide that you may decide not to pay or because life may happen and you forget to pay it, your score can drop as much as 150 points for one late payment. So paying your bills on time is vitally important. Yeah, so speaking of that, I closed out an account. I paid for an account uh, that I added uh, I added a line of credit at Wheels Advice uh, to my credit uh, profile and I paid it for like two years on time. Everything's on time. Uh, and I, uh, after, well, actually this, this, actually this was a different, this wasn't, we, uh, this wasn't one of the cards that Will advised me on. This was another card. So this particular card I had, this particular line I had for two years. So, I paid it on time. I had it on automatic uh, payment, uh, two years straight, paid it off, bam, closed the account, everything good. I get a notice from TransUnion saying um, that 
my credit score had dropped 69 points because yeah. they reported that I had a late payment, which I did not. And I had my paperwork to prove it. So, you know, it was a mild hiccup. Thank God I wasn't trying to take care of some business at the time when I got that notice of so what I did. I jumped right on it. Carl Will, yo, man, they tripping at your hand. <laughs> Get <laughs> what I got to do. So he told me exactly <laughs> what to do. And, you know, I contacted the people uh, and they asked for some uh, proof. I sent it to them. I, they got, they, they made the correction. And now my credit score is, you know, back where it should be, where it should have been all along. But so, so you have those situations too, where even when you pay your credit on time and when you pay your stuff on time, Sometimes the companies will make mistakes. So that's why you have All to monitor your credit, right? And how, how important is monitoring that credit? Oh, man. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you know, and people often say, hey, well, I can pull my credit once a year for free. And I'm saying, you know what? That's better than nothing. But imagine pulling your credit in January. Something like that happens because over 70% of credit reports have errors that are not to their own fault. Mm -hmm. And then let's say in June, you're trying to purchase a home. Well, because you haven't been monitoring your credit for six months, by the time you get to the, 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 the table with the lender, they pull your credit. Next thing you know, your score is in the 500. But when you pulled it in January, it was a 750 because you wasn't able to monitor it. So this is why I tell people, invest in some form of credit monitoring. The free one is good, but it just gives you that peace of mind. And kind of like insurance, I'd rather have it and not need it than to need it and not have it because scenarios like that happen all the time. Or let's even just talk about identity theft. Someone could steal your identity. I mean, there's been major data breaches. The IRS had a data breach. Equifax had a data breach. So if someone gets a hold of your information, you may never know until you're getting ready to go and make a purchase, a major purchase. And by that time, it's too late. Now you just put yourself three to six months behind the eight ball because now you got to clean up something that could have been fixed and, 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 and stopped immediately once it's happened. So I wholeheartedly recommend everyone have some form of a credit monitoring service that mm -hmm. gives them that peace of mind in case anything pops up. As soon as it hits, usually you're alerted, especially if, if you have the app connected to one of your cell phone devices. Right. What's the rule of thumb for having healthy credit to when you're paying your debt down, like what's the what's the rule of thumb to where that where that debt should the debt should be at in terms of the threshold that you should not go past? You know? Absolutely. So there's two different types of credit. You have installment accounts and revolving accounts. Now installment accounts would be anything with a fixed payment, an auto loan, a mortgage, student loans. As long as you make payments on those, they do not impact you from a, a threshold of where the debt should be. Now, it can impact your DTI, which stands for your debt to income ratio, but that really doesn't hold as much weight as long as you're not trying to make a major purchase. Now, you have what I call revolving credit or what's called revolving credit, which are credit cards and department store cards. And that makes up 30% of your score which is the second largest component of what makes up a credit score. Now, the reason that's important is your credit usage, which is tied to your revolving credit, You, if you go over 30% of your revolving balances, then it can drop your score. So what does that look like? That means, let's say you have $1,000 of total credit cards. That's it, just $1,000. If you spend more than $300 of that credit, your score is going to automatically drop. So I always often say life happens. So, you know, your brakes need to be repaired. You have a $1,000 credit card. The brakes are going to cost you $700 for labor, parts, everything. You spent $700 bucks because you have a $1,000 credit limit. Your score, uh, now you've used 70% of that credit. Your score just dropped 100 points, not because you did anything wrong, not because you missed a late payment, because your credit usage is vitally important to what makes up your credit score. <clears throat> So this is why I always say, as a rule of thumb, we should have at least access to five to $10,000 of credit just in case. Because in that mm -hmm. same scenario, let's say you have $10,000 of available credit limit, 
and you have to use that $700. Now your credit usage is only 7%. So now it didn't impact your score as much. So that credit usage is vitally important, which is the second largest component of what makes up your credit score. So you're not getting the $10,000 credit card to spend $10,000. You're getting it to make the strength in your, your credit, your credit profile. Yeah, it's all a game. That's why I call it the, the credit game. You know, that's why on the cover of my book, Credit is King, it's a chess piece because it's really all strategy. But when you understand the strategies, now you can play the game differently. And so, yeah, you hit the nail right on the head. It's not for us to, to go and use and blow. It's to have that cushion in case life does happen. Is it smarter to pay off your balance or always keep a balance? What, what's the smartest way to do that in order to maintain a strong credit score mm -hmm. extra points? Yeah, I love this question because there's so much jargon around that particular scenario. So now credit card companies will tell you, hey, make payments over time. And what I tell people is they tell you that because they make money off the interest. Okay. <laughs> so if you can pay it in full and you can afford to pay it in full, pay it in full. Now, there are some people who play the credit card game where they'll spend it up and then pay it off, spend it up and pay it off. Mm -hmm. And I just tell people, if you play that game, make sure you understand your statement dates and due dates. And what that means is that your statement date, excuse me, your due date may be the fifth of the month, but the statement date may be the ninth, which means that you can pay your bill on the fifth, but then if you use it on the sixth again and you max it out, well then once they report it on the statement date on the ninth, it's gonna show maxed out again. So I recommend everybody know the difference in their due dates and their statement dates. So that way they don't put themselves in a position where their usage is always high. And so, but uh, yeah, that is one of the misconceptions that you have to pay it monthly payments over time. That's not completely true. Okay, so if I, if I got a, $10,000 credit card and I want to pay, let's say I owe $5,000, i am going to pay the whole $5,000 and let's say my due date is on the 5th and but my statement date is on the 9th. I need to make Correct. sure that, I need to make sure if I'm going to, if I'm going to use it again, that is after the 9th or if I use it, I don't know near that $5,000 mark, right? That is correct. Always wait till the statement date goes to the, because they send it to the bureaus a few days after the due date, which is the statement date. Some people call it the post date or whatever. So yeah, you want to wait till after that date to be able to touch those funds again, especially if you're going to use a substantial amount of that credit line. Typically, what's the spread on the, on the due date and the statement date? Every bank varies. It can be anywhere from uh, three to seven days. Okay. So it, it literally could vary by the bank because every bank has a different a reporting cycle. Right, right. So explain to them the mixture. What's a good, healthy mixture of credit? Because that's one of the things that you taught me also. I didn't understand that at all. I didn't even know. <laughs> like you say, I wasn't educated. So I didn't know that they right. were, I didn't know that they were judging me based on if I had uh, credit cards, uh, uh, you know, too many lines of credit with just, you know, in, in one particular genre. I didn't know that I had, I, I had to have a good mix of uh, credit cards, uh, installment loans, uh, you know, or whatever. Can you explain how that mixture of credit work and how you're being judged? Yeah, so 10% uh, of our scores are graded based upon a mixture of credit. And so, like I mentioned earlier, you have installments and you have revolving. So a good healthy mix would be having a combination of both, not just a bunch of credit cards or not just an installment accounts. Now, yeah. I will say, if you only have installment accounts and no revolving credit, again, what I often say, what you don't know can hurt you and it will. So for example, let's say you only have an auto loan reporting. You have an automobile, you're, you're at the end of your loan and you're excited because you're about to pay it off. Well, you may not know by paying off that auto loan, your score can actually drop because what happens is, is again, we talked about 35% of our score is based upon credit history. 
When you no longer have anything reporting because you paid the auto loan off, your score drops. So now not only do you have payment history, what makes up 35% of your score, you don't have any revolving accounts, which makes up 30% of your score. So you're essentially missing 65% of what makes up your credit score. So your score just went to the toilet, not because you did anything wrong, but because you didn't know enough about enough. So that credit mixture is vitally important. So you said, so let me get this clear. You said, if you pay that credit, if you pay that car loan off and that's the only car loan you have, that that revolving, right? I mean, that's, no, installment. A, that's an installment. Correct. And then you have a, what's the other one that you compare it to that you say that, that makes you lose 60, 65%? So if you don't have any revolving, meaning you don't even have a credit card. Right. So that could, cost you, that, that could cost you 65 points? I mean, 65% of your score? 65% of your score can't even be calculated because you don't have any reporting history from the auto loan. You paid it off and you don't have any revolving credit because payment history is only calculated when you have something you're paying towards that's reporting on your credit. And yeah. the 30% usage can only be calculated if you have revolving accounts. And so if you don't have either of them, you're essentially missing out on 60% of what makes up your credit score. Yeah. Is it a mistake to have too many credit cards, even if you're paying them on time? Good, very great. A great question. Actually, no. And the reason I say that because I have a lot of clients who we work with we use revolving credit cards, revolving lines of credit as form of creative financing. So, uh, especially with a lot of my small business owners. And so, so many, someone, someone may say, well, what is creative financing? Well, most banks as a brand new business will not let you walk into the bank and get a loan. So mm -hmm. there's actually, I call it a loophole in the banking system where as long as you have great credit and you have a business, you can go to the bank and get revolving credit cards and lines of credit. So I have clients who have 50 plus credit lines or credit cards in total that accumulate to over three, four, five hundred thousand dollars worth of credit that they use to invest into businesses, uh, invest into companies, invest into real estate. So as long as you take care of your credit, the banks will always give you more money. So you can never have too many accounts. It's about making sure that you keep your usage down, you make your payments on time, and you're utilizing them the proper way. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna order five more credit cards today. <laughs> <laughs> man, hey, man, let me tell you something. Isn't it amazing how when you don't really need their money, they want to throw it at you? Man, when you oh, get the man. credit score right, man, they be throwing money at you, but you know, you gotta be Literally. responsible or otherwise you're gonna be right back where you was. See, like, they throw money at me all day, every day. And I'd be like, get out of here, get out of here. I'd be looking at American <laughs> Express like, man, yeah, I go on. All them cars, they, they be trying to hit me up with everything, man. It's right. beautiful, man, once, once you get to that level. It's, it's very, it's very empowering. Um, what, do you, what do you think about people who, who burn their credit, you know, go through the credit, you know, they, maybe they experiencing some type of financial hardship and, you know, they messed their credit up real, real bad. And they think that they have to, before they can start repairing their credit, they think that they have to have money just flowing out the anus to get back right. You know, right. How, how easy is it to get your credit back right once you do blow it out? Absolutely. So the biggest thing that I always tell people is that the beautiful thing about credit is it can always be rebuilt and restored and repaired. And so fortunately and unfortunately, wealthy people understand that very well, you know, because they may leverage their credit to go and invest in a $10 million project. They're not using their own money. And so that's why when people hear these athletes and entertainers that may possibly have went bankrupt, it's not that they're broke. They're protecting their personal assets. It's a strategy. And so you may leverage your credit and, and it gets damaged. You can always repair it. Now, no, it may take time depending on what your situation is. 
That's why you want to know different strategies. That's why you want to get with an expert. And so, unfortunately, we've been conditioned to think that you got to have all this money. You got to repay back all this debt. Now, I'm not telling people to go out there, get credit and blow it. But we understand life happens. You can have a medical situation. You can lose your job. You can over leverage. You can get into a bad business deal. It's, it's a million different scenarios that could potentially happen. But I always just tell people, because sometimes I get people who they'll get one late payment and think life is over and they give up on their credit. I'm like, we have to stop thinking like that. And that's why I say it starts with the mindset first. Understand that you may take an L. In life, you're going to take many L's. I mean, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I know you're an entrepreneur, and we've taken many L's over the years. But it's about how you rebound, and your credit can always be re, rebuilt. Now, one of the things I often preach is that that's why it's important, especially if you're an entrepreneur, to have credit partners. What does that mean? That means, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm in business. You know, I have multiple companies, which I, per, which I personally do. Uh, and meanwhile, my, my credit may take a dip because let's say a, a deal goes horribly bad. You know, well, I have other people who are on my team who may be a part of one of my other organizations that we may have helped build their credit score up. So now they can be a credit partner for me. That means that we can now add them onto my company, go to the banks and still get capital. So now I can still operate my business because I already know how to run the company. I just unfortunately had a, a mishap with my credit. So the beautiful part about credit is that it's, it's endless possibilities when you have the proper strategies. And that's why I often say, we don't have a money problem. People always say, man, if I can get 10 bands, I'll be on. Or if I can get 100,000, I'll be good. And that's not true because we can give you 100,000 and you'll fumble it. But if you have the proper strategies on credit, the proper strategies on money, the proper strategies on how to make money, make money for you, it's nothing you can't get access to or there's no levels or no amount of success that you can't amass when you have the proper strategies in place. So bruising your credit, as long as you understand it can always be rebuilt at any time, uh, I mean, that's a beautiful thing just to know that you can always uh, start over. And that's one of the things I'm always trying to tell people is that life isn't over. Even no matter if you file bankruptcy, life is not over. Like, did you know, most people think that once you file bankruptcy, it's, it's, it's a wrap. Well, first of all, bankruptcy really is asset protection for those who don't know. That's what it was really put in place for. But if you file bankruptcy, it can stay on your credit for up to 10 years once it's been discharged. But most people may not know you can dispute bankruptcies. So as soon as it's been discharged, you can dispute that off your credit. Yeah, you may have, you did file the BK, but they may not be reporting the information accurately. So if they're not reporting the information accurately, which 60 to 70% of the time they are not, they have to remove it off of your credit report. So these are the things that people really, I want them to understand because we walk around with all of these myths thinking that it's over for us. So there mm -hmm. definitely is life after damaged, bruised, and battered credit. Right, right. Well, let's open it up, man. Let's open it up to, to, to the subscribers. Uh, they, they've been waiting patiently, and I thank y'all for doing that. Uh, let's go right on in. Let's start with Damon. Uh, he said, this much needed. Uh, thanks for the platform and powerful information on the real show. This Libra uh, says, so true. Just follow the advice. It works. Uh, uh, who is this? Uh, Cartier, Cartier, Cartier. I need help on my credit as well. How can I, how can I, the person, help to restore my credit? Uh, you want to drop your uh, info real quick, Will? And his, and his info yeah, is also, I put a link in the description uh, to his, uh, I think his website. Yeah, his website. But go ahead and drop the information real quick so, he, so uh, they can get it. Absolutely. So uh, my name is Mr. Will Roundtree across all social media platforms. I actually have two videos that went viral on YouTube, how to get the perfect credit score, as well as why you should not pay your collection accounts. So it's a ton of free content on my YouTube. And then also I actually just released about three, almost three weeks ago, uh, the 30 day credit repair challenge, which is a do it yourself credit repair course that teaches you everything from A to Z about credit. I have over eight hours of video content 
in over 30 days, we release a new credit strategy to you that not only is gonna teach you the basics and benefits of credit, but we also give you the strategies on disputing it, giving you sample letters, giving you the addresses and the fax numbers to the credit bureaus, how to dispute that bankruptcy, uh, how to dispute credit inquiries, a ton of different things. So, and that website is creditrepairchallenge.com. It's a one-time fee of $97. And King, I tell people, if it's not the best $97 that you feel is of value, we give you your money back. So we stand by our product. That's creditrepairchallenge.com. Mimi, uh, thanks Mimi. Mimi has sent a shout out, made a donation. Black and proud woman says, I'm getting ready to buy a house. What's the first thing I need to do? Go check your credit, check, check your credit. And one of the things a lot of people may not know, most people qualify for a home. People think you need to have like a 750 to get a home. That's not true. Now, some lenders have kind of increased their or tightened their, uh, um, their approvals uh, guidelines. But the thing I'm always telling people, if you have at least a 620 to a 660, reach out to a lender and go get pre-qualified because you may be closer than you think to being qualified for a home. Now, even if you're not approved, they're gonna tell you exactly what you need to do to get in, get in position. This way, now you can work backwards. Then you can reach out to a credit strategist or reach out to our team and they, they know, they'll know exactly what they have to do to get you there. So sometimes we just have to stop being scared or having this uh, false sense of fear, thinking, oh, I, I don't wanna get denied. Well. Sometimes just going through the process so you will know exactly what you have to do so we can reverse engineer to get you approved. But my recommendation, go and check your credit and go find a lender that can pre-approve you tomorrow or Monday. Yeah. Okay. Mother of one asked the question, how do you know when a potential lender is using FICO score eight or nine? Also, what is the best way to get collections you've paid completely off your credit? Great question. So you really won't know which model the bank is using. You can ask them. I can tell you now, most people that work at these banks and financial institutions know nothing about credit. So I always just say, as long as your credit is in position, you'll be fine. Now, with the FICO 10 scoring model coming out, essentially that just means that they're going to look back at minimum of two years over your credit history. And so that means that people who are trying to buy a bunch of trade lines or add a bunch of authorized users on their credit, that won't benefit them anymore. And so I always just tell people, as long as you have good credit, it doesn't matter what scoring model they use. And then uh, the, what was the second half of that question? I, I apologize. Uh, what's the best way to get collections you pay completely oh, yeah. off your credit? So if you've already paid a collection, we do recommend you dispute it uh, because typically if you're gonna pay a collection, we recommend that you request the deletion letter, which I talk about in my video on uh, why you should not pay your collection account. And the title doesn't mean don't go pay them. It really is why you shouldn't pay them unless you have the proper information. Because right. we've actually had, I had a client who had got an inheritance of about $15,000, $20,000, went and paid off all her collection accounts and her score dropped 150 points. So again, you wanna know what to do before you do it and before you start shelling out a lot of that money. So, but if you have already paid it, and I talk about this in my 30 day credit repair challenge, uh, and we have the sample letters, we give you the, the bureau's phone numbers, the fax numbers, the, e, uh, the uh, mailing addresses, we give you all of the strategies on how to dispute those accounts off your report, whether they are paid or unpaid. Great information, man. Great, great information. And now we come okay. to the bonus question which is what this video is all about. How do I go out here and get myself about $100,000 in loans if I ain't got no money or assets? Definitely. So um, i put it to you like this. And I kind of preference that on one of the previous uh, uh, talk-offs, which is why, you know, which I knew which was the topic of this uh, live. So there is a loophole in the banking system. All right. Now, to get an actual loan, the banks require a ton of documentation uh, and, 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 you know, tax returns, pay stubs, all that. 
So in the, the loophole in the banking system, which we, we're not supposed to know this information, y'all. So the loophole is, is that when you go after revolving credit, and what that means is credit cards, lines of credit, business credit cards, business lines of credit. This is why everybody should have a business, whether you are operational or not. You should have a business just for the leveraging standpoint. But mm -hmm. so how it works is with revolving credit, the banks usually do not request proof of income. What does that mean? That means that you can state your income or use household income. And I'm putting in air quotes. So we had a client who actually reached out to us. I was working with him one-on-one, -on -one, myself and my team. He didn't have a job. He actually lost his job in the middle of the process. I asked him, how did you get fired on your day off? So <laughs> that's a whole inside joke. Okay. And so uh, he came to us. We helped him uh, fix his credit. He didn't have a job. We went to the banks and started applying for lines of credit, business lines of credit, business credit cards, personal credit cards, because he's a real estate investor. Over the course of working with him for about, I want to say about 18 months, he has probably over about $175,000 in revolving credit that he was able to use to buy his first investment property. And he used a portion of that also to help his wife start her first business. And so the thing is, is that banks have less stringent uh, guidelines when it comes to revolving credit. One, because it's unsecured. And for those who don't know what that means, that means that you don't have to provide a bunch of documentation. It's uncollateralized, which means you don't have to put up your house. You don't have to put up your car. And it's, it's uh, non-discretionary, which means you can use it for whatever. So mm -hmm. as a new business, if I get a credit card or a line of credit for $20,000, I can use it for anything. Now, a lot of people may not know this. 82% of small and medium-sized businesses were started using credit cards. 82% of small and medium-sized businesses were started using credit cards. Uh, I also read an article, say that again? I said, do you hear that fam? 82% of businesses, for all of you people out there that think, man, I ain't got no money. My, I, ain't come, I didn't come from money. Uh, you know, I ain't got no big money. I don't need all this, I need that. The man just gave you the game. He said 82% of businesses were started using credit cards. That's the importance of credit. But go ahead. Game changer. Game yeah. changer. Like I learned uh, about a few months back, Robert Townsend, he financed Hollywood Chef for using yeah. credit. I heard about and it. The reason that's so powerful, I really want people to drill this in. He had 100% ownership. Think about that. He didn't have to go out and get investors. He didn't have to have people pitching in and then he mortgaged his, his, his legacy. He owned 100% because he self-financed it. And that's why I tell a lot of individuals who are trying to be, uh, become business owners and entrepreneurs, you know, that when you understand ownership, like I'd rather bet on myself, go and use the bank's money and, 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 and use that to, to self-finance my company. So this way I'm not mortgaging my business too early. And I learned this the hard way. I remember a, a business investment I, I did around 2012 when I didn't have all of the strategy and knowledge. Uh, I, more, I, I let someone invest in my company for peanuts. It wasn't, I mean, it was less than $3,000. I thought he had a lot of sweat equity. He told me he had all these clients and this, that, and the third or whatever. And he wanted 60% of my company. So I gave him 60%, which means I worked for him. I gave him 60% of my company because I was looking for an investor. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, when, you are get, when you're taking on investors early in the game, you've literally just mortgaged your, your legacy because now if you're coming to me in a place of desperation and you don't have any money or any capital and I put up the, the lion's share of the investment, I'm going to dictate the, the terms of that. And so understand, when you understand the power of credit, now I can go to the bank and get revolving lines of credit, and now I can self-finance my project, self-finance my businesses. And I mean, literally, we've had clients get, you know, now everybody may not get 100000 right away, but over time, getting up to that, 
with you know with with showing very little documentation, without showing very little you know paperwork. The banks most of the time for revolving credit cards don't even ask for tax returns or proof of income when you have great credit. And that's the other beautiful part. When you have great credit, a lot of the times when it comes to revolving credit, trying to purchase an auto automobile or whatever, the banks don't ask for proof of income. And so that's really where it starts about learning the power of how credit puts you in position to have the power to purchase. I call it my my three P's. You want to be in position to have the power to purchase. Be in position to have the power to purchase that first home for your family. Be in position to have the power to purchase, to, to have the capital to invest in your business, to invest and purchase other companies, to invest into the stock market or whatever it is that you may want to do. But it all starts with the foundation of understanding credit and understanding the strategies of credit. That's what it is, man. I think that's a very good note to end on. Uh, great information, great insight. Thank you. I know I'm thankful. I'm sure that everybody that caught it was thankful, uh, is thankful. And before we go, one more time, tell them how to reach you. Absolutely. So you can follow me on social media across all platforms. Uh, Mr. Will Roundtree. That's Mr. Will Roundtree, R-O-U-N-D-T-R-E-E. -E. Uh, of course, make sure you go to my YouTube, like, uh, subscribe, share, have a ton of video content. And then more importantly, go to my 30-day credit repair challenge. That's creditrepairchallenge.com, creditrepairchallenge.com. One-time fee, $97, over eight hours of bonus content. Uh, we have a full module. It's, it's actual lesson, lessons. We give you one new credit lesson strategy per day. Uh, we have a ton of resources. We have sample letters in there. We have a community chat. Uh, it's a, I mean, like I always, I always say, if it's not the best $97 that you invest, we will give you your money back, no matter how far you went to the course. And so please make sure everybody go out to the 30 day credit repair challenge. Man, what's the meaning behind the $97? Why not just 99 like everybody else do 100? <laughs> what's 97? I, mean, I, was trying to, I was trying to save people $2, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. I appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Real Roundtree. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ken. Absolutely, salute. Gotta man. have you back on. I, I definitely gotta. This, this is too good. Gotta have you back Anytime. on. Anytime. Anytime. You got the direct number, man. Because I, I got another idea about a show that I would like to do with you regarding finances. So yeah, okay. Absolutely, we'll do this again. Absolutely. Anytime. Appreciate it. Follow this man. Follow this man. And when you do, and you uh, you, know, you get in on this program, all you gotta do, fam is listen to what the man tell you and do exactly what he tell you to do. Don't try to go in there thinking and all that stuff, man. Just do what the man say. He already done did the leg work. He done took all the guesswork out. So let him do what he do and follow the instructions. You're gonna thank me for this. I promise you, you're gonna thank me for this. <laughs> Again, family, Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank Come you, man. Talk. Appreciate y'all. All right, Have peace. You.